can a simple photo editor turn this image into this in fairly easy steps? Well, ACDC Gemstone beta version can. Like the name states, it is in beta version. So ACDC have brought out this program for people to download it and trial it and see how they like it, if they find problems with it. Now, I don't know if they'll make this a paid program. I'm pretty sure it will be. But if they keep this program reasonably priced, it will give Adobe Lightroom a run for its money. Trust me, I've used Adobe Lightroom since Adobe Lightroom version 3. And this program is easy to use. And if reasonably priced, will interest a lot of people that don't want to pay the subscription for Adobe Lightroom. So let's check it out now. This is the first screen you see when you open up ACDC. You can see I've already brought in a few images and this is for me one of the few downsides of this program. I'm nitpicking here because all the photos that you bring in to ACDC Gemstone are just down here. Hopefully they will have a way to remove these when you don't need them. And to bring an image into ACDC Gemstone, all we do is we just click on File, we click Open, and we select the image that we want. Once we click Open, the simple editor opens in the background. We click on it. Sometimes it pops up. Sometimes it just stays on your taskbar. This is my image now. You can see it's a raw file, fairly flat a sunset at Lake Eden. You can see all these tabs down here on the right. So this program is very similar to Nikon NX Studio. So if you've used how to play with NX Studio, you will really like this program. I would call ACDC Gemstone Nikon NX Studio on steroids because it can do so much more. This program, before we jump in, can also do layering and all that. But this is quite advanced. Today, we're just looking at the simple photo editor. So the first thing I like to do in an image is use geometry, which is up the top here. Because geometry controls the cropping and the perspective of the image. I used a Takina 11 to 20 mil lens on this at 11 mils. And you can see there is a lot of distortion in this image, so I want to get rid of it. So we click Geometry, and there we go. We can say Enable Lens Correction, so we click and it shows the model, but we have to click the lens. It doesn't do it automatically. So all I have to do is just scroll down here and find the Takina 11 to 20. There it is there. See, Takina 11 to 20, f2.8. Click on it. That's it. Now it is fixed up the distortion for that lens but there's still the distortion here where it's leaning in so here we see perspective and before we do perspective see we have no straightening we have straightening here so this is where we straighten our horizon and the horizon needs to be straightened just that little bit that's it just minus two and here in perspective we have vertical horizontal so if we touch the vertical here can you see it's leaning in this is pushing it more in we want to bring the hotel back upright so that's it like that what we do is now we have to crop because you can see we've got more a lot of sky here the hotel is straight we will crop the image we come down here to the bottom corner and we just crop it so i'm bringing it in it's hard to see but see on the side here it's all black this is because the distortion has actually cropped the image in so we've got like a wedge We've got to get rid of that. So we just keep cropping until we can fit our image a little bit further in. That's enough for me. I bring it down here. Now I can see I've got too much distortion. So I'll bring it back a little bit while the crop tool is there because I can use these horizontal lines. Sorry, I can use the vertical lines to line up my image. That looks really good. Okay, so now we'll just bring the crop back out so it touches the edge. We have all our perspective set up. Let's jump into the tuning of the, our image. We come up back up here. See geometry is ticked at the moment. And now we click on tune. Notice here. See we've got all these circles here. This shows that these sections have been adjusted. It would be so cool if Adobe Lightroom would have this. Yes, we have the history tool on the left of Adobe Lightroom where we can just jump back. But this makes it so easy to see how much we've actually worked on the image. Just take a look at this. If I unticked here, perspective, look at that. Can you see it's just changing back and forward 
and we come back to what we have now. This is such a cool feature and Nikon NX Studio has this as well. So it makes it very easy for us to see. Let's jump into Tune where all the fun part happens. You can modify your image. Now you can do this with a JPEG as well, but we're doing it with a RAW file to show how powerful this program can be. So we start off here, we have general, so we can choose. We have color or black and white. So we can make, even if it's a colored image, we can turn it to black and white. So we have exposure, highlight, fill light, which is your shadows. Contrast, saturation, vibrance, clarity, and dehaze. I just love dehaze because especially at sunrise and sunset, there's always going to be some haze in the image. And dehaze just gets rid of that haze and really punches out these photos. We have our histogram up the top here. We can see that. So if we increase our exposure a bit, makes it a bit nicer. We don't want to blow out the highlights right in the bottom here. And we can see on our histogram, we've actually pushed it up a little bit, but that's okay. It's not too much. The highlights and fill light, highlights and shadows, are very similar to NX Studio. In Adobe Lightroom, they are in the center. If we slide to the left, it increases the depth of our highlights. If we slide to the right, we're decreasing the highlights. So we're making the image brighter. Here, it's set to zero. You can only decrease your highlights and in the fill light, your shadows, you can only increase your shadows. Let's use the highlights and we'll drop the highlights down a little bit. Cool, that looks very nice. Let's use our fill light and we'll just increase the shadows just a little bit. Now we don't want too much because all this dark area, there's not much detail in there. So there's no use bringing up too much fill light like this, for example. See, this is just way overdone. So we'll just bring it back here. So we'll add a little bit of contrast. Here we have saturation. So this slider, you'll find there's more saturation sliders further down, but this one is overall the image. So these sliders that we're working on here, this section controls our whole image. You have to understand this because later on in the following steps, we will control individual parts of our image. We'll just increase the saturation just that little bit, increase the vibrance. This punches out the, your main colors, the RGBs, red, greens, and blues. We'll give it about clarity. Now let's have some magic. Grab that dehaze slider and let's take it to the right. And look at that. And you see how nice that looks? If I bring it back, so we're at 36, watch what happens if I bring it back to zero. See that it's quite flat. Now the next one under here is white balance. Very simple. So we can choose has shot or we can choose presets just like in our camera. So we have auto, sunny, cloudy. Let's hit auto and see what happens. Look how nice that is. We can see we have our temperature, we have our tint, just like Lightroom and many others. Look at this next slider, the strength of our white balance. So how strong do we want to make this? 100%, let's jump down to the next one. Light IQ, so this is equalizing the light between your shadows, your midtones, and your highlights. This is such a cool feature and something that Adobe Lightroom doesn't have. Now we have three different modes. We have basic, standard, and advanced. I will just cover basic because the others are quite complicated. So you would have to spend quite a bit of time to understand these sliders. Because look, if I go to standard, see, it gives us sliders like this. If I go to advanced, it gives you different sets. So we'll just go to basic and we just have shadows, midtones, and highlights. Let's increase the light just in our shadow area. You watch this, I decrease the light in the shadows. Notice that the strength of the sun isn't changing because that's highlights, but the blues, which is our shadow, it's a darker area. So there are shadows, they're being affected. The foreground is being affected. We'll just increase our shadows a little bit, balance out the image a bit more. That's really nice. Midtones is a center, increase it a little bit there. Now watch if we increase the highlights. See it's blowing out the sun? Now, we can actually decrease our highlights here. That looks really nice and quite balanced, but I can see the shadows are just pushed a little bit too much. So we'll just bring the shadows a little bit more. Wow, look at that. We've only gone three steps. Let's take out Light IQ. Look at it. Can you see how good it is? This tools are just so good. Now we have color equalization, color EQ. Here, we can control the saturation and the brightness of our individual colors. And this is in Adobe Lightroom as well. Watch the saturation of the orange. I can desaturate, 
the orange a bit. So this is all around the sun. Or I can increase the saturation. Can you see? It's quite subtle, but can you see that? I don't like to overdo my images. Now the blues. You can see, to me, the blue sky here is a little bit oversaturated. So I can grab the blue and just desaturate a little bit. That looks much better. We'll leave all the rest of the colors alone. Now I come up to brightness. This is how bright the, the colors can be. So we can darken that color. Now watch what happens if I touch the blue here. Can you see I'm darkening the blue? This looks more like a sunset because remember, where is the brightest part of your image at sunset? On the horizon. So these clouds up here, the sky is much darker. So I don't want that area too bright because although it might look nice, it's not realistic. So we've dropped the brightness. Now if I come up here to the brightness of the orange, I'm increasing the brightness and this looks quite good. Now the other two here are hue and saturation. Now if I click on hue here, and I'll just play around with the sky just to show you. Hue is we're controlling what the blue color looks like. Is it bluey aqua or bluey magenta? So watch what happens if I slide it towards the magenta side. Can you see that? Look, if I go all the way across, see it's gone to magenta, a purplish color. So we'll bring it back. And if I go the other way, can you see it's made it very blue? I don't want that. I'll just slightly to the magenta side. That's it. That's all I need to do here. Now, this one here, this might take you a while to work out and to have a play with, but this is a color wheel and it controls individual colors. So this is another step. So you can use the color EQ or you can go down here as well and use the color wheel. So watch what happens when I grab this color wheel and start moving it. So I grab it. Look, can you see? It's only the reds and watch now has I just rotate it around. Now we're in the blues, but notice everything else is gray, black. I come down here into the light blues, keep going down into the greens. Now we got the yellows there. Look at that yellowy orange. If I just leave it there, I can just individually, all that color there, I can adjust the saturation. Look at that. That yellowy orange color is gone, but look at the blues. It didn't affect the blues at all. I can bring it back. I can oversaturate that color and it hasn't affected any other color. The color EQ and the color wheel are very similar. They just work slightly differently. Let's go down to tone wheels. Wow, look at this. So this is very similar to Lightroom as well. And these control highlights, midtones, and shadows as well. Now notice the color wheel is in the center of each one. So we're at neutral. I'll just quickly just do the highlights here. So I grab it here and the intensity goes towards the outside. So if I go all the way to the outside here, there, look at that. I've actually punched all that color out. So we'll go back to halfway. Now watch what happens when I slide the wheel along. Can you see now I'm starting to use, I'm using different colors. So I'm now I'm in the aqua. If I go back up to the blue here, see I'm in the blues and I keep spinning it around and it's touching all different colors. The highlights, I just want to come back here and I'll get nearly back to center. You can see what it does. If I do the same thing for the shadows, I can grab it, slide it to the blues, and look, it's hardly touched the center. The further out you go, the more intensity you're giving it. We just come back towards the center there. That looks really good. Now we can close it down. We move on to the next one, which is tone curves. This is so good. Tone curves takes a while to work out if I just grab the center here. So in the center are our mid-tones. So if I just grab it, pull it down a bit, there. It's just darkening our image a little bit in the mid-tones. If I want the highlights, I grab up here and I'll just push them up. It's just strengthening everything. If I don't like it, I can just go up here. See these two arrows? It says, says reset. So reset this group to default settings. If you think you've stuffed up, just come up here and go reset. I don't need the tone curves in this image here. Now these others here, they're just extras. If you are doing a portrait, you could use soft focus. So it's just going to soften the image down. We can add effects. So we can add a color overlay. We can add a photo effect, sepia, somber, Ripley, whatever you want. I'll just untick that. We can change, we can use color gradients. There's so much down here. We can use split toning. We can put a vignette. The last thing that I quickly want to do here is going to the detail. We jump into detail 
here we have our sharpening and our noise reduction. Now why did I choose this last? Because this is the last thing that you normally do. If you add sharpening at the start and you're playing around with contrast, with dehaze, it's going to magnify the sharpening and your noise reduction. It's going to affect the noise reduction. So you do this last. We click on sharpening. We have amount of sharpening, the radius, the mask, the detail, and our threshold. Very similar to Adobe Lightroom. The amount of sharpening we add, and isn't it quite funny? They've set it at a default of 25, exactly like Lightroom. We can add a bit more sharpening. We'll give it a bit more radius, and we can see here our sample. And see there's a square there, so we can grab that square, and I can bring it along if I want to see a bit more detail. So I'm not at the hotel here. We can see we've got a bit of noise there. Watch what happens if I add more sharpening. See that? That's just way gone overboard. And take a look. Can you see that halo around the top of the hotel? We don't want that. So we'll just bring it back down. Look at that. The halo is nearly gone. Reduce some of the detail. And we'll just give it a little bit of threshold. There. That's it. We jump down to noise reduction. And here we have the luminance, the strength, the color. So we go click on luminance. Looks quite good. We click on preserve detail a little bit. There, that looks so much better. We have chromatic aberration. We don't have any aberration here, so that's fine. I cannot see any. Let's quickly take before and after. I come down here, bottom left-hand corner, show original. There we go. Now, show original will show the image after it has the perspective control added. It won't go back all the way to the start. Because we've changed the perspective, we've cropped it in, it shows everything from that point on. It doesn't show the original file. This is before we've done any editing in the tune, the detail. It doesn't show geometry. Geometry is already locked in there. So this is before and this is after. So to download this program, just click. There's a link in the description below. You go up to the ACDC website. You just have to write your name, your email address, and it will send you an email with the link to download this program. That's it. You don't have to register or anything like that. I certainly will be having more play with this program. If it can do, let's say, 80% of what Lightroom can do, for somebody that is just a hobbyist photographer, this would definitely be a great program. This program, if it retails for less than 100 US dollars, it would be a bargain. Even up to around 150 dollars, I would snap it up. If you found value in this video, give it a thumbs up. Stay safe, enjoy your photography, and I'll see you next time.